So let's talk about the, the single lip cutters. I fell in love with these years ago when I uh, was a mold maker and ran a tracing machine. And, uh, and invariably we had to use single lip cutters on a mechanical tracing machine because if you tried to use a four flute cutter, the thing just, you know, you couldn't hang on to it. It's just too much torque. So that's what you do with these. Now, the reason we use them for tracing is we could grind a 30 thousandths radius, precision 30 thousandths radius on the corner, and then our stylus that followed the model would have a 30 thousandths radius. So you got a really nice blend, okay? So I came to find out, though, that they were great, in the, uh, at least in mold shops and machine shops, because how many times you uh, run into a problem where you need a, you know, uh, a little tapered cutter, a two-degree tapered cutter, and maybe with a... 45 thousandths radius on it, or um, a full ball nose cutter, a weird size, 235 diameter. You can do all that with this cutter grinder, okay? So these cutters, the first thing I want to tell you is they're light duty, and what you do is fast light cuts, to three or four or five thousandths at a time, but you go like a bat out of hell with them, okay? So um, they, they run pretty fast. You run them pretty fast and uh, uh, probably like almost double the speed of a normal carbide end mill and you just take fast light cuts and you'll, you can put really nice little radiuses uh, in the corners of slots when you need them if a customer calls out for it. Now let's look at a couple other things about these single lip cutters. First of all, the one thing about a single lip cutter is it's always split to center. Okay, So this is a half inch cutter blank and course it's 250 from here to here and that's the first thing you do uh, is you try to buy your carbide I use carbide all the time but you can make these out of high speed too you just have to change the wheel on the machine uh, buy your cutter blank already split you're just especially the high speed stuff uh, or the carbide stuff you're just blowing away your diamond wheel splitting these cutters back and forth and I show you how to do that on the video in case you get stuck and you have to do it it's very simple but you do waste a lot of your valuable $200 diamond wheel doing that so if a try to buy your cutter blanks they come in, uh, you know, I used to buy half inch, three eighths, five sixteenths, quarter inch, three sixteenths, and eighth inch, okay? And I always bought them split on both ends, so you're done, okay? So that's the first tip, is to buy your cutter blank already split if you can. Second thing, like I said, is they're always split to the center. In fact, when I split them, I always left them thou heavy here. Uh, just in case I had to repick up on it or something, a thousands isn't going to hurt you. All right, and then uh, one other thing is the way a single lip cutter works is you can see we've got a radius on the end, and they work the best when you have a, some sort of a radius because if it's just a sharp point, it's just going to wear right off. Okay, and what we're going to learn in our, in our video series here is how to swing a precision radius on that uh, tool, and also um, how do you relieve that radius. The final step to the single lip cutter uh, is what I usually do. As you can see, it's all the way slanted, all the way up to the radius. I put that up against the wheel, and by eye, I just keep watching it until I come up just about to that radius. So 90% of the cutter is relieved. So that's how they work. Okay, and here's a couple examples. These are some quarter-inch ones I've made for the class. Uh, this is a full ball. Okay, very simple to do. Um, this is a quarter-inch cutter with a 60 thousandths radius on the tip. Okay, right there. Here's one that has an, oh, here's a five degree cutter with a, I think that's a 60 thousandths radius on this side. I'll have to look at my lesson again. But that's a, again, and I, and I can actually teach you too how to hold a certain size at the tip. So uh, I can't remember what, what we, I did these videos a year and a half ago. So it's all, uh, I'll, I'll have all the information on the video. But here's a five degree cutter that I held a specific tip size to with a formula where I just, tilted it and ground it and I had the tip then ground a precision radius on it so there's a lot you can do with these things and finally uh, here's a little cutter I made let's see here another full ball and this one a uh, little 45 degree cutter at the tip here so again uh, and it's, it's totally relieved on the back side and I show you how to do all that how to relieve the sides and how to relieve the angles and uh, there you go so these uh, again are light duty cutters but they, they're really for form cutting when you need radiuses and angles to a specific size. And again, if somebody told me tomorrow morning if I had one of these, uh, hey, we need a 235 diameter cutter or, uh, made up with an 8 thousandths radius in the corner for an O-ring groove, no sweat, could do it. So uh, that's what these do. So that's your overview on single lip cutters. So uh, let's get to an introduction of the decal cutter grinder.